a lot of people ask me, are you related to Archie Gibbons? And I said, I would have to sit down and talk with him to hear his history to know if we're related or not. Because I know my history. I know where my name came from. I, I, I've traced it back almost to like the mid-1800s with my family. And from there, we couldn't find any more records of it. But it helps me to be able to appreciate that, that, that I am somebody. And that matters to me when I can, when the name Daddy Gibbons is said, I know who I am. And this is not some name that's thrown out in the air. I know not only who I am, I know whose I am. Yes. And if you're discouraged yes. by the fact that you can't go back and trace your lineage, I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus came 42 generations. Go back to the book. Yes. And there's your lineage, there's your history, the people that he shaped and formed for himself that shall show forth the praises of his people, yeah. of people who he called out of darkness into his marvelous light. These are, he said, the people that didn't have mercy now gave mercy now. The, that's your lineage now. To know that even before the foundation of this earth were formed, that God had you on his mind. Yeah. The angels had a conversation and said, what is man? What is Brian Heron? That you're so mindful of him. He was so crazy about Brian Heron that he had to get him out of his mind, push back the curtains of time, put him into the earth of time, and show him what he had on his mind. Yeah. Yeah. I'm afraid, Lord. I don't know if y'all got that. God was so crazy about you, young folk. He had you in his mind. He was thinking about you. Have you ever had somebody in your mind that you just was just thinking about that you couldn't see that wasn't around? And so when you had, he said, I, 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 was, I was thinking about you so much that I had to create this concept, this ideology called time. Then I had to create and I had to pull back the curtain of time. I had to step out of eternity, place you into the womb of your mother, whether you love her, like her or not, in order for you to come into this world, breathe the breath of life into your body so that now I can begin to show you what I had on my mind you may say, well, I was born in a single-parent household. My dad was this, my mom was that. Well, the enemy at the same time with an attack because he knew if you, became, if you came to the realization of what God had on his mind about you, he was going to be in trouble. Yeah. He knew he was aware of it. He said, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to distort your perception by getting you to spend all of your time looking at things that are of no avail. I want you to become kind of source of useless information. I want you to spend your time learning Lil Wayne lyrics, learning how to play the Call of Duty and blackouts. I want you to waste your time trying to go steal some clothes at the mall and to be able to sit back and hear what God has to say to what's about. Yeah. That's all right. This is what he said. And I'll keep it coming. I want to sow dissension between you and your mother. Yes, you your yes. father. I want you to become an upset and indignant. I want you to go and put your mouth against your mama. I want you to put your mouth against your daddy. Because in yes. doing so, you dishonor one of God's commandments by putting your mouth on, on the father or mother that he used to create you. I want you to get caught up in sowing that seed of discord and decision and division out into the atmosphere so that when you come into the, to the point in time in your life when you realize I'm about to be a father, I'm about to be a mother, you are so lost within yourself that you can't wrap your mind around the concept of being a father and mother because you put your mouth against your father yeah. and your mother. Yeah. Jesus. It's a distorted perception. It's a distorted view. He said, if I can continually get you to keep it, if I can have you sit in this pew, have your Bible open, look at dead at the passage, but have your mind up there on Plymouth or on Broadway. Come on. Hmm. Have you spent two hours that you get in church listening, praising, and worshiping, but never receiving it? Yes, yes. Never hear from you. Never come into the realization that it was it was there for you for the taking. Yes. And then another thing that he uses with the young folks in, in doing and, and, and plaguing our minds with things that we can see, then he comes in with this this it's something so diabolical, but it's so prevalent and prosperous in our community. He depresses you. He causes you to become depressed and indignant, upset and angry with what you see. Because he's, he's causing you to look in the mirror and say, I don't look like Carrie Hilson. I'm not built like Nicki Minaj. 
You know, I, my hair's not long like Lil Wayne's, so or you know, I can't get out there and get it like Waco. What? <laughs> <laughs> And make, a, and make you think that these are the images that you are to aspire to because you don't have them, because your hair doesn't look like that, because your eyes are that color, because you don't have the attire, then you become depressed because now you're asking mom to try to make this happen and mom can't really afford American Eagle and all this other stuff that you're wearing. So now you're seeing that, you know, my other little partners out here in the streets, they're able to run up in the mall, run out with it and all this, and so you get depressed because they have something that you see, that you want, but you feel like you can't have. Walk around with your head down, you'll be depressed. And though it may not be physically you got your head down, but inside your heart and your spirit, your head is down and you're not happy about who you are or from whence you came because of what you see and think that you have. The sum total of our existence as a people is not based upon what we can accumulate on this earth. That's not the totality of our existence. It's not based upon whether or not I got platinum or whether or not I got new wheels on my car. It's not based upon whether or not my trunk is rattling when I ride down. It's not based upon the fact of whether or not I'm fresh to death every day and you can teach me how to dougie. It's not based upon all of that. All that will come in time. In time it'll come. But he's played this trick and got us depressed. And all depression is, church, is anger yes. turned inside. Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. All depression is, is anger turned inside. You feel like nothing in my history has been worth living yes. for. Nothing in my presence is of real value. And I can't see tomorrow getting any better. So all I am today in my present is angry. I've got tired of being angry outwardly, so I've shut down. I've grown quiet. I've isolated myself and turned it on the inside, and now I'm depressed. So now my grades are failing in school. Now I'm acting out in class. Now I'm not abiding by the rules of the household. Now I'm not, you know, I'm just doing whatever in the neighborhood, the community. Yeah. Now I have no care or concern for the name that I carry because I'm depressed. And I don't have the value system in place to, to help me navigate through this. So I'll sit back and just remain depressed. And I'll come through and I'll go through the formalities. I'll smile when I see pastors. I'll be respectable around the deacons and the elders and church mothers of the church. But as soon as y'all get outside of my eyesight, I'll be in the church park parking lot smoking cigarettes. Yes. I'll, I'll be on the church grounds cussing. I, I'll be sending some illicit text from the, from, the, from the church back room or something like that. I'll be somewhere doing something I know I shouldn't be doing. Because I haven't dealt with these things. Mm. History teaches us that if we don't learn the lessons of our past, that will repeat the past. <laughs> So what I, I want to close on this note. If you're here today and you're saying, Brother Danny, my value system has been distorted. I put more emphasis on the external things that are temporary than the things that are eternal. And I want to take a stand today. I want to get my life right with Jesus. Not because it's Black History Month, not because I'm a black man, not because you know any of that, but just because of the reason that I know I'm the real goal. And I have this inside of me. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't understand what it is. But now I know. Now I see it. Now I feel it. Now I hear it. If that's you here today, I would ask that you would come up to the front. If you're here today and you say you've been dealing with some depression or anger and frustration as a young man or a young woman, and you know you need to get it back right with Lord, I would ask that you would come forward. this isn't something that everybody is happy about just admitting it. Yes. No one likes to say that they're depressed. Yes. No one likes to say that they, they've been dealing with unhappiness. Yes. Because we're used to wearing the mask. We're used to putting it on. Yes. No one wants to say that. No one wants to say that I'm tired of conforming. I'm tired of, a, of, a, of assimilating the people I'm around. And acting like them when I know that this isn't really me. If you're here today and you know that you haven't been who God called you to be, I would ask that you would take a stand. And get your life back right with the Lord. 
If there's none, I would ask that anybody who would like prayer to come forward. If you're saying the message that you spoke today spoke, spoke to my heart, I would ask that you would come forward if you would like prayer.